So now you know how to loop through a process multiple times. But what if you want to stop? That's where the keywords break and continue can be used. So let's look at an example here. Let's say I have an array of characters is B in it. And I want to find out if there's a B in this car array. Well, I can use my for loop and say I'm going to start at the very beginning. And I'm going to loop through all the way to the end of the array. And when I do that, I can say, well, if the actual character is equal to B, then yeah, that's that's the searching condition that I want. And I can say that my Boolean is B in it should be true. Well, that's fine, but when I first find this B here, I don't I don't really need to process U and B and B and B. I already know that there's a B in it. And this is where I can break out of the loop and say break. Now what's going to happen is this is going to loop through, I is going to be 0, it's going to find that B, it's going to break, and then it's going to continue on to my code down here. However, what if instead of just knowing if there's a B in there, I wanted to know how many Bs are in there? Well, let's see, I could start with an int, how many Bs? The problem is once it finds a B, I, I don't want it to actually leave this whole for loop, I just want it to quickly skip to the next i. And for that, we can say if b i is equal to b, is b in it? Yes, true. Um, we'll take the how many b's and increment it. But instead of breaking, we're going to say continue. So what that's going to say is, yes, we're going to loop through. Once you find a b, don't then just exit the loop, but just quickly skip to the next iteration. So if there was code down here, it wouldn't necessarily have to be wasted and executed. We want to just continue. And that's how you can use break and continue to either exit a block of code that's in a loop or just skip ahead to the next iteration.